The following is a Fight Club presentation. Loss and tragedy have stalked the lives and careers of Juan Francisco Estrada and Roman Gonzalez. But the duo's refusal to bow to circumstance or let tragedy define them is an eloquent reflection of the best boxing has to offer. The way that both men have dealt with the often capricious hands that fate has dealt them serves as an example and an inspiration to us all. The duo's lives and careers also serve as a reminder that boxing is a sport which offers the opportunities to young men and women from the most desperate of circumstances and most humble and poverty-stricken of backgrounds to not only become role models, but also national icons. The respectful rivalry between Gonzalez and Estrada was born in the raucous and rowdy environs of the Memorial Sports Arena in Los Angeles. Back then, Estrada was a 22-year-old in his first world title fight, while Gonzalez was only 25, but a comparative veteran, having already participated in eight world title contests. Gonzalez's WBA light flyweight title was on the line that night, and he retained it via unanimous decision, but only after a bow that was as punishing as it was thrilling, as intense as it was bruising. The excruciating pain that Estrada felt that night of being so agonizingly close to changing his life was nothing to what he had already endured. Estrada discovered the harsh reality of the inexorable connection between pain and existence at an early age. At the age of seven, Estrada's mother died from leukemia. Estrada's aunt took it upon herself to raise Estrada and his siblings. At the age of 14, Estrada's estranged father would also pass away, something which naturally affected the young Mexican. And as it has proved for so many of his fellow working-class Mexicans, boxing provided a refuge for the young Estrada, as he grew up in the City of the Sun, Hermosillo in Sonora State. Estrada channeled his pain and frustration into his boxing, winning three national amateur titles and picking up a nickname that has stayed with him ever since. The Rooster, or El Gallo. Since the first Gonzalez Estrada fight in 2012, which Gonzalez narrowly won, both men have experienced further peaks and troughs in their lives and careers. Estrada used the momentum and confidence gained from pushing Gonzalez so close to propel him to defeat WBA and WBO flyweight ruler Brian Valoria. Gonzalez enjoyed a flyweight world title reign of his own. But a rematch between the two men at 112 pounds never came off. Seeking a world title in a fourth weight class, Gonzalez instead moved up to Superfly in 2016, defeating Carlos Cuadras to win the WBC title. At this point, Chaco Latito was widely regarded as the world's best pound-for-pound pound fighter. However, just as his career was at his peak, things started to go wrong. Firstly, his 54-year-old trainer, Arnulfo Abando, suffered a stroke and died. And then, Gonzalez lost his precious unbeaten record to Srisaket Sorungvisai via a close and debatable majority decision. When Gonzalez lost a rematch to Srisaket via a devastating fourth round knockout in December 2017, his career at the highest level looked to be over. 
and the Estrada Chocolatito rivalry looked to be over before it even had a chance to bear its fruit. Gradually, however, Destiny drew the duo together again. After two fierce battles of his own with Srisaket, Estrada emerged with the mantle of WBC Super Flyway Champion, while Gonzalez mounted an incredible comeback, bouncing back from the death of Abondo and myriad injury issues to defeat Kal Yafai for the WBA 115 pounds title in 2020. Estrada and Gonzalez were now both world title holders in the same division again. And, eight long years after they first met, a rematch finally beckoned. Naturally, when the super flyweight unification rematch between Chocolatito and Estrada occurred back in March of this year, there was a large level of hype placed by boxing fans. So much so, that it would be difficult for any two men to live up to it. Gonzalez and Estrada not only met expectations, but far surpassed them in an instant classic. Hands are down for Estrada, he's welcoming these punches so he can counter. But right now it's Chuck Latino on the front foot! The crowd is on their feet! Estrada came out of the gate fast in the opening round trying to pressure Gonzalez and throw the Nicaraguan legend off of his game. Estrada throws the first punches of the fight. He wants to be first and be last, he said. The early success didn't hold up long for Estrada, however, as Gonzalez appeared to take over the fight until the halfway mark. Fighters have a hard time keeping Chocolatito off. Non-stop punches just like that. Good one-two from the Nicaraguan. Gonzalez kept forward momentum, unloading with crisp combinations that were answered nearly punch for punch by Estrada. Right hand, a right cross of Estrada, then an uppercut. Chocolatino answers back. This is El Gallo's fight right here, punching backwards, getting the nice counters. No, oh, big left hand for El Gallo again as Chocolatino opens up. After 12 rounds of action, it was Estrada who took the fight on two of the three official scorecards. The Gonzalez-Estrada rivalry has been a long and sometimes circuitous one, during which both men have experienced more than their fair share of tragedy and disappointments. But they are both still here, standing strong, standing proud, and ready to inspire us all over again for the third and perhaps final time.